Hello and welcome on another SQL Beats 2020 session. This time, this year, SQL Beats 2020 is online. This is the first time when the conference is online because this uncertain time, we need to cope with that situation somehow. And this is a good decision. So I hope you will enjoy this session watching in online. This session will be about Azure Synapse. But it's not about Azure Synapse overview. It's particularly about when and how to migrate to Azure Synapse, which is actually when to migrate our current Azure Data Warehouse on-premise to Azure Synapse. What do we need to know about it? So, few words about me. My name is Kamil and I'm Microsoft Data Platform MVP living in the UK since 2015, originally I'm from Poland, working for Altius Data in London uh, as a principal consultant. I'm working in IT and with databases since uh, about 2000, so I have right now 20 years of experience working with different types of systems and applications, softwares and languages. I'm author of a um, project member of a few open sources uh, projects in GitHub. So you can take a look on the Azure Data Factory um, tools, Azure Data Factory DevOps and uh, SCD Merge Wizard. Also, I'm founder of SQL Player blog, which you can find on sqlplayer.net. So on the blog, you can find some technical posts uh, also for people with various skills level, some useful information like links, cheat sheets, recommended book for, especially for someone who would like to start with in IT or maybe would like to learn something about a uh, secure server, not only from the beginning. Uh, also, a few months ago, I opened my uh, YouTube channel. So, uh, you know, sometimes it's, it's better or, or easier to explain something, uh, showing uh, something step by step uh, as video. So I would like to encourage you to visit uh, both the blog as well as um, YouTube channel. Also on the blog, you can find the podcasts. So podcasts uh, also started with the same time when I started with blogging. And uh, we were talking about uh, we were talking with many uh, familiar people with our SQL family uh, members uh, about different topics, uh, not only technical things, but uh, also about you know work-life balance, private approach to things, how the people started, uh, not only in IT, but in general in, in the journey. You can see this as transcript as well as um, podcast and listening this in audio and listening this podcast every time, even if you're just doing something. Yeah? Okay, let's go to the main topic today, which is the Azure Synapse. So Azure Synapse is, as Microsoft said to us, is Azure SQL Data Warehouse involved. So it's not like only the name naming or name changed. Yeah, it's it's much much more. Azure Synapse Analytics is a platform that generally right now offers uh, much more than Azure SQL Data Warehouse itself in the past. And also I'm happy that Microsoft changed the name because previously it was uh, a little bit confused when people thought that Azure SQL Data Warehouse is nothing else but just the data warehouse in Azure, which is not true. If you have your own Azure Data Warehouse on-prem and you'd like to migrate this to the, to the Azure Synapse, which is the currently now the name of the previously called Azure, uh, Azure SQL database, it's not exactly the same. And you, 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 you must know actually the differences and uh, what's the important uh, from the architecture perspective, because uh, definitely it's not the same. And this session is about um, that kind of things. So if we were talking about, you know, modern data warehouse, uh, what is the modern data warehouse? So is a solution where you can import and ingest the data from many uh, different sources. It might be some uh, unstructured data, it might be structured data, it might be semi-structured data located on uh, on prem, located in the cloud, and etc. So uh, plenty of sources uh, can be involved here. And using the tool like Azure Data Factory, for example, you can ingest all this uh, all those uh, data from those sources and put them to the storage. 
uh, it's uh, it might be the blob storage or data lake storage and then the other phrase another phrase is the prepare data again our data factory is the tool is the orchestration tool that can help you uh, with uh, in here as well as uh, our data bricks and then the next stage is to transform and, and, and enrich the data uh, again, Azure Data Factory and Azure Data Bricks can help uh, you with, with those things like cleaning data, transforming the data, aggregating data, preparing to basically to the next to the next stage, which is uh, Azure Secure Data Warehouse, which is the Azure uh, Synapse right now. So that's the layer who can serve the data to the visualization. So right now, all the stages has been replaced will be provided by Azure Synapse Analytics. All the things is integrated in one tool. You can have and manage uh, everything uh, in, in this one tool. So, so far we had multiple analytics platforms like for, 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 for big data, uh, big data analytics, uh, we could, uh, you know, uh, fastly exploring the data, semi-structured and etc. Enterprise data warehousing, uh, where we could, uh, you know, operational, uh, working with operational data, we called data, the data warehouse. And now Azure Synapse Analytics brings those two worlds together with a unified experience uh, to ingest, prepare, manage and serve the data for immediate business intelligence and machine learning needs. So Azure Synapse Analytics is a limitless analytics service that brings together enterprise data warehousing and big data analytics. So if we comparing uh, data warehouse in on-prem uh, to, the, to the SQL data warehouse in the cloud, Azure Synapse, uh, what's the difference actually? The current data warehouse on-prem is SMP. So it's SMP architecture when it's one server where each CPU is uh, the server shared the same memory, disks and network controls. Whereas MPP means data is distributed among uh, many independent servers running in parallel and is a shared nothing architecture where each server operates self sufficiently and controls its own memory and disk. And then we can call it uh, and we can do the scale out in that kind of scenarios. So how the architecture uh, looks like, we need to know how this looks like uh, before we start thinking and considering uh, migration to it. So at the top, we have something uh, what, what is called uh, control node. Control node is, you can imagine like a brains of uh, Synapse Analytics. It's also, you know, the public face of the appliance. So this is the endpoint that you are connecting to, like previously you did for a SQL Server. So it's also run Azure SQL Server database and holds a shell of a copy of each database, metadata, statistics, and etc. And also behind the scenes, we have the balanced storage, uh, which contains 60 distribution. This is the, uh, this is the static value right now, and uh, since, since the beginning. And uh, between them, so I will explain uh, how it works and how many the other um, architectures are architecture uh, services we have. On the example when we have scale or size, uh, DW400. So between the balance store and control node, uh, we have something uh, called um, compute nodes. So the compute nodes are the worker B of Syna Synapse Analytics. It also runs Azure SQL, uh, SQL Server database and contains a slice of each database. So those compute nodes uh, are responsible for do the work actually. And also uh, the compute nodes has uh, DMS. The DMS is a data movement service. It's a part of secret source of Synapse Analytics. Uh, it's responsible for moving data around uh, uh, if, if needed. Uh, so. So DMS uh, is responsible to get the data from the balance storage and if required, they also can shuffle or broadcast those data uh, between uh, themselves. And so I want to mention about the DW400 because in this scale, you have exactly four compute nodes. So as I mentioned, Azure Synapse Analytics is much more than the SQL Azure database previously. It contains much more services and tools, uh, integrated data platform for BI. 
But during this session, I will be focused on uh, this part. Uh, I will be focused on analytics runtime, which is the SQL, which is the SQL pool, and provisioned uh, approach, which is uh, basically uh, actually giving us uh, the Azure, the engine for data warehouse. So those are key features of uh, Azure Synapse Analytics, and as uh, as I said, we'll be focusing on this part, on this middle uh, SQL provisioned uh, one. You can build your modern data warehouse as well as uh, importing the data and uh, doing the queries to the external data and having uh, workload management. Before we go and move on to the actual question and answering why and when we should migrate to Azure Synapse, we need to understand what is the storage and how it works. How the data is, uh, how the data is distributed. Uh, what kind of options we have uh, to distribute uh, the data uh, for the same table across uh, the sixty distributions, as I mentioned. So we have three options. So we have uh, round robin, we have hash function, and replicated option. So round robin distributed is um, distributes tables rows uh, evenly across all the distributions. The assignment of rows uh, to distribution is random. As a result, the system sometimes needs to invoke a data movement operation to better organize uh, your data before it can resolve a query. This extra step can, can slow down your queries, but for example, joining uh, a round robin table usually requires uh, reshuffling the data, which is a performance hit. That's why we have another one, which is the hash distributed option. The hash distributed table distributes tables, table rows across uh, the compute nodes by using a deterministic hash, hash function. Deterministic hash function to assign each row to, to one distribution, to exactly one distribution. So having the same identical value, the hash function decides to choose always the same distribution. And then hash distributed tables work uh, very well for large FARC tables in a star schema. They can have a very large number of rows and still achieve high performance. There are some design considerations that help you to get the performance uh, the distributed system is designed to provide. So you should consider uh, using a hash distributed option uh, for tables when the table size on disk is more than 2 gigabytes or the table has frequent insert, update, or delete operations. And the replicated tables. A replicated table has a full copy of uh, the table, the whole table, accessible on each compute node. So replicating a table removes the need to transfer data among compute nodes uh, before a join or aggregation. Since the table has multiple copies, replicated tables works best when the table size is less than 2 gigabytes compressed. Very important thing to understand uh, in Azure Synapse is also type partitioning. It's working exactly the same like uh, in a uh, normal secure data warehouse, but now you need to understand that we have 60 distribution. During this video, I don't want to explain what is the benefits uh, to using the partitions, one of benefits to loads and etc. But I would like to warn you and uh, make you aware of how the partitioning works uh, across all the 60 distributions. So if you decide partitioning uh, some table by date, for example, each shard is partitioned with the same date partition. A minimum of 1 million rows per distribution and partition is needed for optimal, for, for, for optimal compression and performance of clustered column store tables. For 60 distribution, you should have at least 60 million of rows. If you added the partition to, to that, you should have 1 million per each distribution, per each partition, uh, to achieve uh, the benefits uh, of, of uh, clustered column store tables, which is default uh, indexing in Azure Synapse. So that's why, this is the reason why I will be uh, reminding you that the size of the database is very important. So if we have uh, three options for, for data distributions, which option we should choose? So for fact tables, as I mentioned before, the hash distribution option is the best. Whereas for dimensions, for example, we should use uh, the replicated uh, distribution option for smaller tables. Smaller tables is uh, below 2 gigabytes. 
And staging, for staging area, uh, you could choose the round robin um, distribution because it's uh, much faster if you're inserting uh, plenty, of, uh, plenty of data. So let's quickly visual so let's quickly visualize how those uh, three distribution uh, options works. So as I mentioned for round robin, uh, for round robin, each row going to the uh, to the to the next uh, compute node, and uh, and so on and so on. So the data will be evenly distributed. Uh, whereas for hash, when we when we decide to 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 uh, to choose the one of the column. Uh, based on the value and the hash result function, um, the data can go to different uh, compute nodes, but always uh, to the same uh, based on the value. And the replicated is, uh, as I mentioned before, it's keeping the whole copy, the whole snapshot of the whole table uh, across all the uh, distributions. When we're working with Azure Synapse, uh, we need to sometimes understand uh, how the SQL engine works behind the scenes. And this is a little bit different engine like uh, in SQL Server, although both using the same engine behind the scenes. But there are some differences uh, that allows you to run the queries in parallel. So the execution plan can contain some uh, that kind of operation as you can see here. So what workloads are suitable for us? From an analytics perspective, it's uh, perfect if you have uh, and store large volumes of data. Uh, because as I mentioned, then you have got the benefits of using uh, this engine and MPP architecture. Generally, it's perfect for batch or micro batch uh, loads, uh, or if you're performing query analysis across the la large data sets. Um, ad hoc reporting across large uh, data volumes as well. Yeah, so everything uh, what is involved uh, the big data volumes, big data, is perfect for this solution. And then what workloads are not suitable for? Uh, so operational workloads, OLTP, is generally something which is uh, not appropriate for Azure Synapse um, and MPP workload because you know using the OLTP you have high frequency reads and writes large number of single to selects which is uh, not very efficient uh, in that solution and also it's not perfect solution if you have uh, some row by row processing needs or working with incompat incompatible formats like XML but Actually, Microsoft team who are working for IDF actually recently added uh, the new feature that allows you read the XML. So maybe you can con convert and transform the XML format files to the format that would be acceptable for Azure Synapse. What is the important thing about thinking about this architecture? You know, as I mentioned previously, size does really matter if you really want to uh, achieve and get the benefits from this solution. Also, you know, proper schema design was uh, very important in SQL Server, but here uh, the right schema design is crucial for Azure uh, Synapse Data Warehouse. Okay, I think now it's time to, uh, to do some demo. At the beginning, let's go to Azure Portal and uh, find out our Synapse workspace. And as you can see in the overview tab, you can see uh, many useful basic information about the Synapse workspace, like uh, primary ADLS, uh, Azure Data Lake storage assigned to the to the workspace, like uh, my uh, SQL admin user account and Active Directory admin account, an endpoint for uh, for the normal one and uh, for the SQL pool and on demand endpoint as well. So, but also you can see this button here, launch Synapse Studio. So I will click that in a minute, but before we go there, uh, also you can see the list of pools that we have uh, created and available uh, in the workspace right now. So I created this SQL pool uh, previously, and as you can see, the size is uh, DW1000 and it's called DWH. So this is my SQL pool, this is my data warehouse in Azure that I will be using during this demonstration. Okay, so let's go to and launch the uh, Azure Syn Synapse Studio. So when I launch it, it will open the, the, the new tab, the new window, 
And as you can see, I have all the information here. And there's a few sections uh, to the to the hubs uh, that you can um, that you can explore. And we will be interesting right now and basically this section, this hub. So as you can see, this is the develop hub and I will be looking on those scripts that I uh, previously prepared. So firstly, uh, I will create, I already created some of the schema Microsoft. Uh, it contains uh, several views um, that helps me um, to understand what is going on with, uh, with, with the engine. And I will use some of them to present how the data is distributed across um, the distributions, okay? So I already have all those view created. So I will go and move on to the next one. So then I create the master key to be able to create the data scope credential to my blob storage. So normally probably you don't have to do that, but my situation, I had some issues with, uh, with credential, with connections. Uh, so I decided to keep it uh, like this and uh, I have uh, this database scope credential uh, connecting to my secure player 2019 blob ADLS storage. So the next step is to create the external data source, my external data source pointing to that uh, data lake storage. And then uh, I'm creating the schemas like ext for external objects and dwh for all the tables that I will be will be working with. Okay, so the next step, because I will be reading the data from the uh, storage, from the blob storage, I need to define the external file format, which describes um, basically the format I will be using to import the data from. So this is this is my file. My file will be uh, keep, my file is kept in the CSV format. So this is the format type, the limited text, and the format options like field terminator or field column separate column separator, uh, which this pipe character and using some defaults uh, types and uh, first row equal to means that I have um, the header um, and columns names in the first row. So that's it for uh, external file format. So I will run it now to create it. Everything is fine. So we can go to the next one, to the next script. And in the next script, I'm creating the external table. So I'm using the data exported to the CSV file from a uh, Stack Overflow example database. So this is one of those of, of, of the table from uh, Stack Overflow database. So as you can see, I'm creating the external table where point the source will be v1 folder, votes folder. And I'm using this um, and this data source created before and file format that I just created uh, in one uh, script before. And that's it. So creating the external table. Ha, this is, this is okay because I'm using here the on SQL on demand, which is wrong. I want to execute everything on this uh, context on the context of my data warehouse. And that's it. After a few seconds, uh, the table has been created. If you want to take a look on the data, shift enter, and we can execute just selected uh, query. And after several seconds, you can see the data are read from the, from the blob storage. So as you can see, we have some columns and some rows in here, which is cool. Okay, so let's go to the actual demonstration. So firstly, we'll create the table on data warehouse with a round robin distribution. Okay, so I'm just make sure that I don't have this table. I think I don't. So firstly, we're creating the table, the new table, votes I will call it RR, which like round robin. And as you can see here, I'm pointing appropriate distribution I would like to use for this table. 
So I'm creating it. This is the CTAS, which means I will create the table inserting the data immediately during this action. So the source for it is my extension, extended table, uh, ext votes I've created before. So when I execute this one, it will create the the new table for me and the table will be populated with all the data com coming from uh, this this external tab table. And also as you can see I'm using the labeling here, option label, and that allows me to follow all the executions uh, in the in the log later on if I would like to see and, and, and filtering uh, by label, by name. Okay, so the table has been created. Now we can see how the data has been distributed across all the distribution. So this is the first moment when I'm using uh, one of the views from Microsoft, as you can see here. So it's showing me how the data is skewed um, across uh, the, the distribution. So uh, I'm interested on about this table. So I'm just filtering by name and execute this. And the beauty of this uh, Synapse Analytics Studio is that you have all the data here and you can obviously uh, go through it, but also you can just very easily change the visualization to the chart. And as you can see, all the data will be beautifully visualized in, in the chart. So, as you can see, we have 60 distributions here, counting from 0 to 59, and the amount rows per each is very similar. And that was the goal. That's, that's how the round robin works, which is, which is good, because in that way we're just getting all the benefits uh, from using uh, MPP uh, architecture. The similar, um, the similar um, results you will get using uh, this uh, store procedure, this system store procedure. As you can see, but this contains a bit more information which we don't need uh, for this uh, for this example, but it's still good to to know about it. So the next table we will create it will be based on the same data which is the external tables, uh, votes table, but we now create the table with hash distribution. So if we're using the hash distribution, we need to point uh, the, the, the column. In my case, it will be ID. So this is the primary key. So when I create the table, we'll see again asking the DMV or view uh, how the data is distributed for this table. So let's wait a few seconds for creating this table and populate the data. This should take another 10 seconds. And then we'll see and run this view. Okay, let's double check if we have data in there. Yes, we have some data. As you can see, the ID looks like this. And this is our key, how the, the data has been uh, spread across the uh, distributions. Uh, let's have a look on this. And chart again. And as you can see, again, even that we use, you know, the, 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 hash, um, the hash method of uh, distributing uh, the data, we again achieve this uh, pretty equal uh, distribution across all the distributions. So, which is good again. And this is because we use um, that column, which is pretty unique. Uh, the ID column and values in this column are pretty, pretty unique. Uh, so yeah, so let's do another, another uh, example and exercise using other column. In this case would be user ID. So if we create the table using um, user ID for hash function, shift enter, 
we'll see if using that column the data will be again equally uh, distributed or not. Okay, finish. So show me the distribution. Now you can see that we have plenty of rows, nine and a half million almost rows in the distribution number zero, and then about 10,000 per each other distribution which is not um, what we would expect uh, from the performance system. So let's have a look why is that. So if we take a look on the, on the data and group by user ID, this doesn't give us very good insight. So let's maybe simulate the has distribution and we'll see what's happening. I'm module. I'm doing the modular by 60, which is the number of uh, distributions. And as you can see, we have uh, most of the value in the in the first um, in the first node in the first distribution. So that's why um, the SQL engine uh, spread the data like this. And this is simple because um, in the user ID, I have uh, almost 10 million of rows with null value for user ID. So that's why all the null values, uh, when you uh, apply the hash function, mm, all the data comes uh, and goes to the, to the first uh, uh, distribution. So that's the answer for that. So if you face something like this, uh, you, you, you will know why, why is that. And another type of distribution is replicated. So repli replicated basically keeps the same uh, set, the same of uh, the, the, the whole um, uh, data in each distribution, the, the full uh, picture, the full snapshot of data. So when we create uh, the table again, but with distribution replicate, we'll see, and during this demonstration, I will show you how uh, how it works and um, how we can get benefits from it. And again, a uh, replicate distribution shouldn't be used for for bigger portion of data, yeah, because uh, you will lose benefits of uh, having you know this distributed data and working at scale. Okay, so uh, now we have this table created. Votes replicate. Uh, let's. Uh, execute some query to that. So I would like to group. So I would like to um, select this vote RR first to show you what kind of execution plan will be prepared if we just ask um, the normal um, table with distribution like uh, round robin. Okay, so let me run this and see how the execution plan looks like. Okay, so we have results and the execution plan. As you can see, I'm using this label filtering here, here to just see the execution plan uh, for the queries um, marked with this label. And now you will see what kind of operation need to be done during the execution plan. What's the list of operation need to be done to return all the data? So uh, one of the interesting and most uh, expensive operation is shuffle mode mo sh shuffle move operation. So this operation is basically responsible for shuffling all the all the data between um, the distributions uh, because we are using group by uh, this column and this column is not and uh, this is the route robin. So basically, there is no column that. Uh, helping us to, to filtering uh, one particular distribution. So in that, in that case, uh, basically I need to uh, read all the distributions to make sure that I'm collecting all the data. 
So this is a perfect example to show you how the replicated distribution works. So we've seen that one. And now when we created this votes replicates, let's have a look how it, how it looks when we read the data from votes replicate. So when I run this query, I will get the results. Okay, and the result is different because I got only 1000 of records uh, from the original uh, table, which is fine. It's, it's, it's uh, still fine for demo purposes. So let's have a look on the execution plan now. So execution plan for that exact um, query for that exact execution. And as you can see, surprisingly, we still have this shuffle move operation and also return operation. So there's some extra operation that we'd like to avoid and because currently we are spending some time on, on them. And this has happened because uh, we never read those data before and the data hasn't, hasn't been um, cached. So when we execute this query again, you should be able to see that, it, as you can see, there's zero seconds how uh, we spent zero seconds on this uh, uh, query now. And now we have just a return operation, which means one of the distribution has been achieved and uh, the, the engine has been, the control node has been able to uh, collect all the information uh, required for this query um, to, to return the data. So this is how the replicated uh, distribution works uh, for tables. So let's talk about the migration, when we should migrate to Azure Synapse. And I'm not talking about uh, uh, the Azure Synapse analytics as a, as a whole platform, as a whole analytics uh, studio or the others, but I'm talking about and focusing only about the SQL pool, which is our data warehouse engine. So first we need to uh, ask ourselves if Azure Synapse is a good fit for us. So if you are asking this question to yourself, like I did a few years ago, you need to verify uh, your source database in many aspects. So basically you need to answer uh, some questions and, uh, and it would be good to you know, use someone who had this experience before. So here I've used uh, the diagram, uh, the decision tree uh, from Melissa Coates. So you can find it out on this uh, link uh, provided below. But only few questions I would like to focus uh, on today during this session. Firstly, what kind of workload do you have for your uh, data warehouse? If it's uh, you know OLTP workload, as already mentioned, OLTP workload is not uh, generally perfect for Azure Synapse. If you have how how, how many data do you have in your in your in your data warehouse? If it's just le less than one terabyte, again maybe it's not a very good uh, choice choice because uh, you should have a large a large set of data, approaching one terabyte or even more in the in the nearest future. Another question is if the, the structure of the data is highly normalized or not, because as we know, data warehouse should have denormalized data. So actually you should have um, well-formatted data, uh, for example, star schema. Again, number of uh, tables and rows. The fewer table with extremely large uh, facts, the better for Azure Synapse. Also, you should think about uh, people, uh, about the team, uh, about their skills, because Azure Synapse is not uh, the same architecture as I mentioned before. So the new skills uh, is required here to, to understand how it works, to understand how to tweak it up, uh, and to understand at the beginning how to design the whole solution. Question 14 is about the frequency of ingestion. So ingestion of batches is much better scenario than a uh, real or near real-time scenario of ingesting um, our uh, data warehouse and so on. As you can see, there's a plenty of uh, those questions that you need to answer and understand before you decide to move on uh, and, and migrate your on-premise data warehouse. Let's talk about uh, how to prepare if, if we decide to do so, how to prepare and copy those data. So the first thing is the data preparation, the files. So the faster 
uh, approach uh, to, to, to migrate the data is to export them to the files, for example, CSV format. But before doing so, you should filter essential objects to migrate. You don't have to migrate everything, probably. So try to avoid and minimize uh, the objects, the tables, and maybe even the range of years that you uh, are migrating to the new solution. Data migration recommendation. So first thing, uh, because we are migrating data and converting them to the, to the CSV format or to the text format, we need to understand and remember how to control the data format, like date, uh, columns, like um, decimal values, and etc. All those things are, or strings, for example, all those things is, is very important to not be uh, surprised when you're importing the data. You can use the compression using uh, gzip or say or parquet. If you're exporting data, you can use uh, bcp for fast export. Use multiple files for very large tables, uh, but keep all the files uh, in, in one folder. So each table should be in one uh, selected fold folder. That helps you to, to organize and migrate and copy those data to, to the cloud. For the copy activities, uh, you can use the AZ copy or data movement libraries. All the other details you will find in the internet. Few tips about the data migration. If you decide to compress the files, don't use the multiple files in the one uh, compress uh, gzip file. If on your enterprise you have very large data set, you can for transfer use uh, some services like uh, express route or import export service. What about the data loading uh, recommendations? So when we export all those data, how to uh, load them to the Azure Synapse SQL pool? For sure, Polybase is the fastest method uh, of uh, importing data to Azure Synapse. For some reason, SSIS also has been pointed as a, one of the fastest methods. But uh, as we know already, Azure Data Factory also has uh, the capability of using Polybase and using storages and staging. Uh, so the IDF orchestration uh, tool is uh, even now probably better method to, 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 to use Polybase and import data to Azure Synapse. Anyway, I will, I will show you during the demonstration a pure method of uh, using the Polybase actually in the script in Azure Synapse. So in this slide, you can see uh, some other few recommendations about, you know, historical load, incremental, what, what kind of approach using uh, in each of them. So Azure Synapse and SQL Pool allows you to scale out and, and change the size uh, of it. So definitely you should use it and inc inc increase the DWU before load and decrease it uh, after, after, after the action of loading. So although uh, the polybase has some limitation, it's still the fastest method of uh, loading and importing data to, uh, to target uh, SQL uh, data warehouse, Azure Synapse. Because in that way, each compute nodes can use and read every single file in your Azure storage, speeding the process up to maximum. And before we move on to the uh, another demonstration, which is the loading of data, take a look on this polybase characteristics uh, that uh, good to know. And now it's time for second demo. So another demo I wanted to uh, present you today is to how to import uh, data to the um, data warehouse to the Azure Synapse. And because, as I mentioned before, um, the quickest and the most efficient way to do this is using uh, polybase this will be part of my demonstration. And uh, so let me open the import script first. Uh, so we'll be creating the external file format again for different, uh, with, with different um, uh, definition of the external format. As you can see now, uh, my field terminator, which is the column separator is comma, and still have um, some headers. Uh, that's why I have first row is equal to. So let me uh, execute this one. So I have external file format created. And my data is New York Taxi, which is another example of uh, open source uh, and uh, publicly available data. So you can find this out in the internet. I just copy a subset of those data. So my, my, my source of 
for this data is uh, folder on blob storage uh, v5 uncompressed because uh, in this case I have 13 files in total which takes almost uh, 11 uh, gigabytes of, um, of size. So I'm creating the external table again and this is just created the metadata and now obviously we don't want to check that this will take uh, some time as you can see my previous experience was uh, 41 uh, seconds uh, but you will see that we have uh, over 77 million of rows in this table uh, not very huge but still not but still not small table so let's create the table and populate with the data from that uh, from that uh, external table so let me run this shift exit shift enter and then the data is importing so the, the table has been created and we can uh, somehow monitor this loading uh, you know I open I'm opening another script that I have and let me run one of the DMVs I have here just to make sure what is what is running right now and what is the progress of this import and the same data we show you in a very simple Power BI report in a minute. So as you can see, we have type of workers here, external reader, hash converter, and writer, and how many megabytes they processed in total, and what is the what is the pace uh, or tempo. Uh, so uh, how many rows uh, has been processed, and etc. So as you can see, and also resource class. So as you can see, I'm I'm using the small one right now. Um, so obviously I can uh, choose another better uh, to, to have better performance for it. So let me show you the same data in this very simple uh, report in Power BI. Let me refresh that. So let me refresh this, re this report to reload the data in the model and refresh the report itself. So there's no plenty rows as you can see 126 but we don't need more and then we see some interesting uh, numbers. So on the top you can see that there's uh, 690 million bytes per second processing which is quite a good number so far it has been processed uh, 40 million of uh, 14 million of rows let me refresh it again and uh, below you can see uh, how the data is distributed so far has been distributed so far so as you can see this might be changing depends on the data coming uh, through to the table and um, below we have the information about how many writers uh, we have and how many hash converters uh, type of workers we have so as you can see 60 and 14 and here how many um, rows has been processed by each of those processes so yeah the process is almost finished and the pace is still pretty good uh, over 600 million uh, bytes per second when we refresh it again I would expect that the process uh, should be finished right now or very close to the end. Yeah, so we can't see any data right now. So let me back to Azure Synapse and as you can see in 1 minute 16 seconds 77 million of rows has been imported. So let me prove that actually. Yeah, so we have over 77 uh, million of rows in the uh, taxi 5 table. So as you can see it's uh, pretty um, it's pretty good performance here using Polybase and in my case I showed you um, the example of uh, 13 uh, separated files but in reality you don't need to split them out and you can read uh, one big file. That's it from me on today uh, during this session. 
I hope you enjoyed this session and all the resources that uh, I presented here or all the other uh, um, important or useful resources you could find on this page that I created uh, especially for signups. So I will be updating that uh, page from time to time. And thank you very much for attending and watching this session. Uh, this session, this presentation will be available on my, on my GitHub uh, repository. So you can go there, visit this um, repository and download this presentation. Thank you very much again and uh, stay safe.